This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We are honored to have at our table this afternoon Alan Rashima, the CEO of Hawaiian Electric Companies. Thank you so much for coming down. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, great to see you. Thank you. I get to see you at this table every three years. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's been three years. I want to renew old times <laughs> here. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about Hawaiian Electric Companies because Hawaiian Electric Companies, you know, just uh, we were just about to talk about this beforehand. And I, you know, it strikes me that just as the computer has become the center of our sort of social and intellectual world, um, we, have to, we have to treat electricity as the center of our, our co community and our society. It is really foundational, isn't it? I mean, what we're seeing with all the recent storms um, and the recovery from that, how, how, how essential a strong grid, uh, reliable power is to our lifestyle. Yeah. Whether we're in Puerto Rico or Hawaii or Houston or Florida, um, yeah. it's essential. Yeah. I was telling you here in, in the think tech, you know, we've learned that you, you need computers, you need electronic gear to do things you have to do. Uh, it's the only way to do it efficiently. And so everyone is finding that out, and that means electricity. And, and you, you, you cannot exist in this society without having plenty of it and reliable. And you provide that, so you become more critical as the days go forward. Well, I, you know, it's a good point. Uh, I, I think that people think of computers as that hard thing on a desk. And of, of course, the computer that everyone uses every day now is a cell phone. Right. The cell phone has more computing power, the smartphone, than I had running the Navy Regional Finance Data Center in San Diego when I was in the Navy <laughs> <laughs> with the big hard drives and tape drives, et cetera, and 52 people punching cards in the back room. What we have in our cell phones has more computing power than that, and it really carries our whole life. It does. Right? Our photos, our music, our records contacts. Lose one and you'll see how you feel about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Bills, uh, email. So access to the internet. So it, it is a big part of our life, uh, life. And not only that, now as we have consumer electronics also having, you know, the internet of things. We, everything is smart. So your coffee maker, your, your refrigerator, everything is connected and can provide information that's useful to our lifestyle, yeah, and all of that runs on electricity. Yeah, and what I've seen is the electric company over the past few years has become more and more a study of technology. And uh, in order to build the grid, you you need to have in these in these days, you really must have that technology to balance it all, make it work, make it serve us. And so, um, since our last discussion here at this yeah. table three years ago, when you first took office, <laughs> which I remember so well, <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, how has that transition been uh -huh. in terms of using technology, yeah. changing the company as you said you would? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I, I, I think that I see it on a day-to-day -day basis, so it's almost like watching something grow. Um, I see the growth. Um, I see the progress. Um, it may not be as visible to people who only see bits and pieces of our company. We were national, today I got a, uh, an email from a public utilities fortnightly congratulating Erlen Miley and Lonnie Shinsato, our co-managers, co even that is a departure, our co-managers of distributed energy resources, rooftop solar. D-E-R. D-E-R, co-managers. They have been named as one of the 40 innovators in the public utility world. In the country. In the country. That's fabulous. Among Investor-owned, municipal-owned co-ops. They are among the 40 top innovators. And that's because we've now innovated with our customer inform information technology, where all applications for rooftop solar and other things, customer-facing co uh, contractors, can go online and do all of their applications and get immediate feedback on what's missing and really complete it in a much faster time. Yeah. I mean, we're doing a lot of things yeah. that maybe a lot of people don't see. Yeah. Well, moving ahead to 100% uh, renewable, you know, it's what, how many, how many years ago? That's 30 years away, but, uh, or 28 as a case. Um, but it just strikes me that in order to move there, you, you have to follow the technology because that's the enabler. 
uh, to get to where we need to go. You have to be ahead of the technology. I Agreed. mean, people are always asking, um, and, and so I will say that we've done a, we've put a lot of work into it. Our transformation includes setting up a whole technology and innovation space headed by Colton Sheng, uh, because we're in constant planning and really trying to be ahead. Uh, we have new business development. We just hired a new returning Hawaii resident to head that up with a lot of background in the uh, communication space, et cetera, where a lot of things are happening. Brennan Morioka has joined us Transportation. to head our electrification efforts. Mm -hmm. AJ Halagao is now our marketing manager, mm -hmm. and we've hired an, another person who's going to run our polls. Um, it, I, I, I attended an Emory, EPRI's Electric Power Research Institute summer meeting where the head of the California PUC, of all things, talked about the value of the wood pole. And I was really heartened to hear it because the wood pole is really the infrastructure we have in every neighborhood. Or the telephone pole. Except in our neighborhood where it's underground. <laughs> we are in the same neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> and as we go to smart cities, sustainable communities, that infrastructure is very valuable for things like sensors that will connect up with smart cars, um, security systems, even allowing you to know where cars are parked, where's the space available, the poles become valuable, okay? So we have a new group that's just going to be looking at managing poles from a different viewpoint. And putting uh, nodules on them, uh, wireless nodules and all that, yeah? Nodes. And bringing additional revenue to the company to make up for the decline in customer load. Uh -huh. Because the more customers we have, the lower the rates are for everyone. Yeah. And if we don't have that, then we have to find other sources yeah. of revenue to make, you know, make it equitable for everyone. And you spoke before uh, uh, the show began about, uh, about drones, which is very interesting technology. And one, would, one has to think a little about why a utility company would be so interested in drones. Why? Well, I, I, a few, I think about a month ago, we uh, showed you how we've used drones for electromagnetic um, kind of uh, serving of the site of our new um, grid solar farm mm -hmm. in Westlock, mm -hmm. looking for things that you otherwise would have to have hard ground kind of contact. We can put sensors on drones and do the survey. A lot of effort, a uh, lot less effort, better results. So you can reduce cost. When you look at Hawaii with our mountains, and we have transmission lines going over mountains. Now drones have only line of sight kind of uh, pilotability. But as things improve, we can use drones for things that we now hire helicopters to do, cutting the cost, improving reliability. Um, in our industry meetings after Hurricane Harvey, right, Houston, Recent. which was a water disaster, um, the report back from Centerpoint was that the two takeaways where the, the value of the drones in assessing damage and recovery and communications. So those were the two takeaways that we need, the internal communications with cellular um, serving the company or hardwired fiber. And we absolutely have to deploy more drone technology to assist in lowering costs and better reliability. I think it's a good example of how technology comes from from the side, from places you wouldn't even you know, expect, and exactly. all of a sudden it can help you big exactly. time. So you mentioned when I saw you at the Verge conference a few months ago, yeah. uh, that, that you were engaged or had already completed a, a significant reorganization of the company. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, we, we knew we had to transform. I think we talked about it early on. And then of course, uh, we were delayed in the transformation, actual implementation, because we didn't know whether the merger would be approved or not approved. Once we knew that it wasn't going to be approved, then we could act on it. And so we've really created a whole new aspect of our business um, so that all of our five islands are now day-to-day -day managed under leadership, what we call our one company initiative, so that we can use best practices across all of the islands. Mm -hmm. We can purchase things more efficiently, sure. right? Um, and finding those little nuggets that we have to change in our systems, uh, getting better. Um, 
among the things that we changed was the four new managers that we talked about. Yes. New revenue sources, new ways of connecting with our customers, bring customer value, staying ahead of technology, even offering um, consulting services to others. Because there's so much that we've done in Hawaii that maybe doesn't get the press here, it gets the press nationally and internationally, and people are always asking us to speak. And I think there's a revenue opportunity for our customers' benefit if we can capture some of that and use some of the things we've learned to help others. Yeah. So um, you, you spoke early on about trying to change a culture, change, change the old culture into a more modern, high-tech culture, if you will, a culture appropriate for the time of fast transition which mm -hmm. we're in. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder how, how that has happened and mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the status of it now? Um, we're getting there. And I think the transformation, the reorganization is an indication, the one company effort is an indication. First, we needed to build trust. We needed to build trust among our employees that we're all headed in the same direction, working for the same cause, getting customer value, being willing to accept some measure of failure. Um, engineering companies, engineers are trained to be perfect. <laughs> because if, you know, we all saw in the old days, Jay, we saw the guys marching across the bridge and the residents would topple the bridge <laughs> right. and the engineers have to make sure it doesn't topple. <laughs> right. Nowadays, um, technology is moving so quickly, where we have to get to is what is an A plus work, B work, C work, D work? Because some things we can take measured risks to get better value faster. And that's the change in the culture. But we have to know what is required, A plus, yeah. right? We're not going to give up anything there because that's safety, re reliability, resiliency. We're willing to take some, some chances, some chances yeah, here yeah, yeah. to just test it. Yeah. So more pilots, we're already doing it. And we've got countless kinds of things on the system that are providing results, uh, allow us to incorporate more rooftop solar safely without threatening the grid. Um, we're installing a flywheel at Campbell Industrial Park in, in well, place of a battery. That's, that's the right? first time in Hawaii. To it? test yeah, it. Yeah. Um, you know, and some of these are in conjunction with Elemental Accelerator. Yeah. So that partnership is really productive. Yeah, good organization. And HNEI really assists yeah, us as well. Another, and EPRI, I mean, all these partnerships really help and us. And they're tech partnerships and entrepreneurial yeah, partnerships. Exactly. Yeah. And you're the hub of the wheel, but all these people are helping you out in one way or another on contract uh, by, by consulting or engineering. I'll, I'll give you one example of when I spoke to a management meeting where we bring all of our managers together. And it was a time when Solar Impulse was kind of waiting in Hawaii for the yeah, opportunity yeah, to, to leave again. <laughs> and um, I borrowed a slide that, with permission, and that was F-A-I-L, because I asked him, how did he ever get this done? And he said, fail. And he had to convince his crew that fail was first attempt in learning. <laughs> it's okay to fail That's very good. in a measured way, but unless you do it, you'll never get where you need to, to be yeah, if you never yeah, take yeah, that yeah. chance, right? So you've mentioned change in culture, and you've mentioned uh, you know, bringing some of the younger executives up uh, you know, in, a, in a, you know, a, a, an ultimate uh, succession. A succession. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the things are changing and, you know, I'd like to ask you about whether leadership mm -hmm. is changing because mm -hmm. leadership in a utility company mm -hmm. is different than leadership in other corporate experiences which you've had. Uh, and how is it changing uh, under you, with you in Hawaiian Electric over yeah. the past few years? Let me just say, I think basic leadership is the same in any organization. I mean, you have to have trust, you have to have vision, you have to have um, management tools that can get you there. Um, trust is the most important in my, in my mind. So you have, to change, you have to have a corporate culture with the tone at the top that reflects how you want people to operate, right, in the space. It has to be Pono. In Hawaii, it has to be Pono, and people have to understand that. Once you're there, then each component has to act in accordance, but act holding hands. Because with everything that's happening, no one part of the company can act without input from everyone. It's mm -hmm. so highly matrixed. Mm -hmm. I will say that 
it's not only us. I think every company is undergoing change. And those that don't understand that they're undergoing change are really going to get whacked. Yeah. yeah. Technology disruption is occurring everywhere, right? It yeah. is not the way we've known it to be. Retail, everything is changing. So we're fortunate that it hit us a while back with um, you know, renewable energy and various policies, oil, oil crises. It forced us to change. So it's going well. We're trying to get a development plan for all of our people, knowing where they're going to land up, where they want to land in the company, what they need to get there. Um, our board is really keen on succession planning. Um, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of developing people, identifying, identifying high potentials, and then coming up with programs that will develop our, our well, I, it, it seems to me the company is doing much better than it was when you first took office. For, you know, the, uh, the next era thing was not a happy time. Uh, it was, I'm sure, stressful, and it stood in the way of some of your programs. Um, and it you know, created a certain amount of polarization in the community that was regrettable. Um, and it, it accentuated some of the trouble about DER that was happening yeah. before. Yeah. It delayed your planning, all that. Those things have subsequently been resolved, no? Right. But let me say, I mean, from our standpoint, Nextero would have been an exceptionally strong partner. Um, and they really supported our transformation. Um, it's unfortunate, I think, how long it took and what happened. Um, but we're beyond that. As soon as we, That's we're, the point. Yeah. Once the decision was made, we're, we're there. We're moving on. We're ready to, to move. And we're still, you know, we learned a lot during that process and we're putting it to good use. Um, but to your point, uh, we have to change. We, we know we have to change and we're still, we're still doing it. Yeah, and, but things look, to me anyway, they look brighter now. Uh, you can see down the track better. The company is, is sort of more in harmony with uh, you know, the public and with the regulators. Uh, all of this seems to be a, a good time for you, am I right? Thank you for saying that. It's hard for us to, to, to say some of those things. We can things. switch chairs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are trying really hard to be good listeners and not, it, it came across in the past that what we were trying to do, and we're trying, we were really trying our best to, to provide solutions. But sometimes we may have been solving a problem that people didn't want solved. I mean, they, they saw something else. So re really being good listeners and bringing all the stakeholders together first getting input, coming to some common understanding. Not that we'll all be agreeing, but at least we're being respectful of parties' input and then developing plans and then going together, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As much as we can to come to some agreement because everybody has to be accountable if we're gonna reach this audacious goal in 30 years. Um, and we can't, and right now it's only on the backs of KIUC and Hawaiian Electric on the re renewable portfolio standards, how we generate electricity. But there, it's a leaky system, <laughs> right, as you know. Yeah. And we really have to get more transportation converted to clean energy. Yeah. Benefits everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. More uses of daytime electricity allows us to take on more renewable energy and lower the cost at the same time for everyone. That sounds like a plan. And after this break, Alan, I'd like to talk about the DER, how it's changed and how it's emerged, uh, and the PSIP and, and how it's changed and emerged and what it looks like for you going forward. Uh, sure. But let's take a short one minute break. That's Alan Oshima, the CEO of Hawaiian Electric Companies, and we are honored to have him here. We'll be right back for more. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness.
episode. Okay, we're back, we're live. We're so happy to have Alan Oshima, president, or rather CEO of uh, Hawaiian Electric Companies, talk about how the company's been doing. Um, and one of the things I wanted to ask you about is DER, I mean, all that uh, with, with the grid and how much energy you can take and renewables and, and it's, everything is moving at the same time. All, it's like watching a, you know, a, a panoply of activity. Um, and now it seems to be in better shape. There was a time when everybody was arguing with you about whether they could give it back and sell you uh, electricity, renewable electricity or not. It seems to have come to a better time. Am I right? I, I think so, I, and I commend the commission for um, basically the the decisions on kind of resolving some of that on the net energy metering, uh, some of their newer decisions on smart energy uh, programs, CGS plus um, self supply is that self supply, still? which um, smart energy where it allows you to have your batteries at your home, supply the battery, and then discharge at evening peak to lower the system requirements so to provide that load. Working together. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there, are, I, I think there is um, a, bit, a much better understanding, and um, and I think I think that the public will come to see that we all, it cannot just benefit some people, for it for us to reach the goal line. It has to be fair. It has to. It has to keep the grid alive because it is the backbone for our economy, for our lifestyles, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it has to be fair to everyone. But for that, everybody's accountable, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you can't just be a taker. You have to also be a contributor um, in some way. Um, so it's complicated, but I think as we keep going, people will have a better understanding what it is to be accountable on an islanded grid so what you know, and you and you 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 finally got approval of the plan. Mm -hmm. I think that was uh, you know it's really troubling for such a long time. There was no agreed plan. Now you have an agreed plan, and it's a matter of implementing, which you are doing. You are actually implementing that plan. Um, is, is what do you see in that? I mean, are we going to need more plans? Are we going to have to mm -hmm. tune that up? How often? And uh, you know how how much um, reliability will we have going forward? to actually reach the goal. Right. Well, basically, all of the plans have to pass a reliability test, right? You can't compromise the reliability of the grid and just do things willy-nilly. That's the hard part. Uh, but we've done a lot. The plans are in constant flux. It's great that we have a five-year action plan, um, but I will tell you that every week, there's another developer coming in with another idea that might supplant or you know, change the plan. And we are open to good ideas. Um, I think one of the planning principles we have is just so critical that we only have so much room in an islanded grid to take on big investments, <laughs> whether it's ours or developers, yeah. right? Because yeah. otherwise, you've obviated the ability to get new technology in different size chunks. Yeah, yeah. So how you phase these things in to make a resource mix that is the best for our customers. On the other hand, you can't wait forever, right? I remember being the president of the PTA and we raised all this money to, it'll sound funny now, to cable the school so we could get televisions and computers in the classroom. And the principal was saying, I'm not doing it yet because the computer prices are gonna drop next year. <laughs> And I'm the old saying, story. guess what? We're going to sunset the funding if you don't get it while our kids are still in at school, right? right? So you can't put it off forever, but yeah. you have to do it in a prudent way that makes sense for everyone. Yeah. And that's, that's a challenge. Yeah. But there are good things happening in Hawaii. Yeah. It's being recognized nationally, internationally. For our advances in renewables. And I think that's one of the things we don't sell enough because, in a sense, we pick at the disagreement parts rather than celebrating where we're in total alignment. And outsiders coming in say it's amazing how aligned the stakeholders are in Hawaii. And we need to build on that alignment to really leverage Hawaii's reputation as vector out of New Zealand. Uh, and we quote them in our PSIP as the Silicon Valley for green energy. I mean, outsiders see it, but we don't consider ourselves to be in that space. So our self-identity 
has to change among all of us. We have to appreciate ourselves. <laughs> right, right. We're not just sun and fun. Yeah. We're doing some great things in yeah. Hawaii. So what do you think renewables, where are they going to go? I mean, there's so many, you know, I, I went to Nilha a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago just mm -hmm. to see some of their, their things. Mm -hmm. uh, it was mm -hmm. very interesting because, you know, algae, mm -hmm. nothing really. Uh, and of course, uh, OTEC, mm -hmm. I'm not sure anything is happening on that. Uh, maybe it will, but not yet. Um, wind seems to be alive. Um, but the cable, that's mm -hmm. probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and solar is king. Solar has emerged as king. Uh, and it fits with all the technology, which kind of makes it king. I'm not sure what geothermal... Can you paint me a picture of which renewables you think will be the, the ones in priority going forward? Well, our PSIP does that, right? We have a lot of solar, a lot of rooftop solar, grid solar. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have even space for offshore wind. And I, I just came back from Scotland where I saw some of the efforts there. Um, and there's been, a, there's been a wind, uh, an offshore wind development in the U.S. too, first one. But, but again, you, you can't generalize from other states because they have a continental shelf, relatively shallow. Right, okay? right. Okay, relatively yeah. close. We have a drop-off. We have a steep drop-off, and we've got other activity, including m marine mammals and military and Environmental shipping, questions. No. All kinds of stuff. So you cannot just say it happened here, therefore it can happen here. People have got to really honor science and the facts. Um, but that's what we do. I mean, we're looking at all of these potentials and making decisions on what the resource mix can be. Mm -hmm. I would love that we had more. Big Island will get to 100% faster than, because it's got such great resources. Um, and, but if we had more load on the Big Island, we could do it even cheaper. <laughs> yes, right? that's so, yeah. Don't you, don't you agree? So all the load is on Oahu, we're not cabled, and there's some issues there. So seeing the totality of what we face, it makes it different. Yeah. We don't have an energy market where we can dump excess solar that is overproduced here to stabilize. We can't dump it into our neighboring state, nor can we import when we need it. Every system, every island is self-reliant. Yeah. And so basic physics controls and basic economics control. Yeah. And so there, that's, that's the rub for Hawaii. That's what makes it so interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a canvas yeah. that, I say it's you, but it's we, it's all of us. We have this canvas to paint and we can come up with creative ideas. We know the general outline of where we're going, but the, the possibilities are enormous in terms of new technology and new creative thinking. Exactly. I'm wondering, you know, back when, when the, the cable was under discussion, um, there was the notion that maybe someday we could equalize the the load and the and the uh, you know the, right. and the power right. so that that there'd be a statewide rate. Right. And and it's clear now yeah. that we're going to have to go island by island. Yeah. Um, at least as far as I can see. But query whether it's, it's it ever is possible logically, technologically, yeah. regulatorily, yes. legally so, to have a uniform rate. So let me separate what you just said. I don't think a statewide rate is totally dependent on technology. I mean, we have regulatory ability to do a statewide rate. The systems don't have to be connected in order to do that. Sure. Um, and, there, and it makes a lot of sense, by the way, in some, in some ways to do that because we're all in the renewable uh, race together. And some places are paying much more based upon the small size of the population, right? Mm -hmm, sure. um, Economies new, of scale. For the new technology. If we spread it out, if we had a bigger piece of bread to spread it out, then it's easier. So I think all of those things are on the table. We're constantly looking at it. Um, we have a one company initiative that could lead to that if, if we, we're doing it for other reasons, but it could lead to that. So there, there are many things that we should consider as we move forward. One of the words that we use a lot in the company is hybrid. So people tend to look at solar as the, the solution. Well, solar plus storage is a hybrid. Solar plus wind plus storage is another hybrid. Microgrids separating far-flung population centers that are small that are now served with expensive and expensive to maintain transmission lines, putting them on a microgrid, right, may make sense for everyone. So these hybrid solutions are things that we look at. And how do we use electrification to build load during the day so we can have more 
solar energy in our system mm -hmm. with uses. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a Rubik's cube, but that's what makes it fun. Where, where does community solar fit in this? Do you see that as an important part going Absolute, forward? Absolutely. So we have, have gone through stakeholder um, discussions. It's uh, at the PUC now for a decision. Um, and we we've have some uh, uh, opinions on it that we should phase it in and learn. Um, and so even that, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. And yeah. it'll benefit those who cannot or who don't have roof. Yeah, to yeah. put solar. Yeah. But I will say that we're, we're, we've, NRG, the successor to the Sun Edison bankruptcy, is now putting on 100, in the process of 110 megawatts of new grid solar, right, at a low cost. Um, and, and that may benefit more people just through just paying the bill rather than doing anything on their own yeah. as we get more grid resources. Yeah. So, I think it's not going to be a binary decision. I think people will have to look at all of their options, but that's our job, to give them options. Give customers choice, right? Complicated, um, complicated question is the relationship of all of this generating power um, through ideally um, increasing renewables and transportation. And Brennan Morioka is you know, yep. very skilled in that. Yep. And, and uh, well, where does that fit in the big picture for you? Because this, transportation is not something utility classically has done. Yeah. And all of a sudden you find yourself linked to it uh, per force. Well, I think, I think the genie's out of the bottle. Electrification <laughs> is going to happen. Autonomous driving is already happening, will, mm -hmm. will become more commonplace. So for us as the electric utility, how do we plan to meet that need? And how do we use that to, to support our customers? As I said, more customers, more load decreases the kilowatt hour rate for everyone, right? Um, but it also allows us to use more solar energy if we charge during the day, uh, charge electric vehicles during the day. And there are ways to do that. So we're coming up with pilot workplace charging plans. Uh, the driving distances in Honolulu, and I'll just use Honolulu, Maui has a very robust charging plan. Big Island has different issues because of the distances distance. involved. But in Honolulu, the average driving distance is relatively short, even with a smaller battery. Um, what you need when you park your car for eight hours, maybe what we call trickle charging, just plug in, yeah. charge what you can, it'll yeah. get you home, yeah. right? And, and you can do the big charging elsewhere. So it's not like the mainland where you're on a freeway and you have to depend upon a fast charge to keep you going from LA to, to San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. You it's can. easier here. Right. Yeah. And by the way, I don't know of anybody who would even wait at a service station for 20 minutes of fast charge for that person to exit the charging Too station. Long. Right. So we ha the psychology of this is where we have to be. And so I think constant sipping as we go along to keep it going, yeah. plus fast charging in some circumstances uh, is what the mix is going to be. You know, Alan, I mean, you, were, you and me were pretty much in the same boat about whether we're going to be around in 2045. <laughs> we're, we're going to be around. Sure, thank you for that. <laughs> but, you know, how does it look for you? I mean, you've had three years of really interesting, creative, um, really successful, in my view, uh, helm, uh, leadership at the helm of Hawaiian Electric wow. Companies. And uh, it hasn't hurt you. you, you you're, you're having a good time, it, it looks like. And the question I put to you is, um, how much longer? I don't know. I, I, my board knows. Uh, <laughs> I, we've had discussions, but it's not like we haven't had these discussions. But I am happy um, because of the progress we're making. Um, what sustains me is the quality of our employees. Um, it's an exceptional company, Jay. We've got some really, really smart, hardworking people. And they're yearning to do more. So that's what keeps me going. So um, thank you for saying that. If I didn't have that, it would not be worth it, right? If it's all about technology, if it's all about science, that doesn't float my boat. And then I think we are becoming better at being transparent and really becoming more accepting of listening to our customers and providing customer value. So we see the numbers going up. We get the mahalograms even after outages. Our app is getting wider acceptance, 
I hope you've downloaded it because it'll give you outage. Uh, I, I have, as a matter of fact. And time for restoration, which yeah. cuts down anxiety, right? Um, and it's just the foundation. Our app is going to get better so that you can do start stop service on the app. I mean, we're going to get better. It, we're, you can see where we're headed. And it's all about customer connectivity. To answer your question, I'm really working hard to develop the strong bench so that the board has some, they already have good choices that they can have even better choices. Thank you, Alan. Alan Roshima, my friend and CEO <laughs> Thanks, of, of Hawaiian Electric Always Company. A pleasure. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks for having me. We'll come back soon. Oh, anytime. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.